time for Pop Pop Plays. Hello and welcome to Pop Pop Plays. Uh, Pop Pop Plays Total War Warhammer 3. Uh, the new Thrones of Decay DLC has just dropped. And we are doing a playthrough of three of the new four, four new legendary lords. Uh, the uh, probably not going to do the free one right away uh, since it's a second Nurgle campaign. Uh, hopefully, if you're watching this, the Empire one with Elfsmith is already up. Now we are doing the Dwarf campaign with Malachi Mackison, the masters masters of innovation. Um, dwarves are not my favorite in, uh, or at least they haven't been in Total War. Uh, I've only played them a little bit. A uh, short Thorgrim game, and I don't even think that was in 3, I think it was 2. I've not done Belagar or Ungrum. Uh, really short Grom Brindle, just kind of a few turns to try him out. I have done Thoric a few times. I do like Thoric. I like his, uh, I guess his storyline. I guess I, I like his uh, campaign rules where he is trying to reassemble some ancient artifacts and, and tracking, tracking those down. Uh, it was kind of hard to do in Total War Warhammer 2, uh, but I had a full campaign there, and I've had a full campaign in Warhammer 3 uh, a while back. Uh, at the time, especially with Thoric, the uh, uh, grudges rules were mechanic was just uh, terrible. Um, he got he got penalized for every artifact I believe that he had not re. Uh, Assembled, so you basically stayed at the worst of the uh, grudge levels the entire campaign. And even with that, honestly, that campaign ended up going smashingly for me. I did really well, with, really well in it, and it lasted quite a while. But, but uh, similar to the, in my opinion, the Empire's game mechanic, it just wasn't a fun mechanic. It was just a, a slog, essentially. It was just a penalty. Whereas a lot of uh, factions, their mechanics. Uh, help you out and are something fun to play with. The Empire and the Dwarves, both both of their main campaign mechanics just weren't. Uh, I've already taken a look at the Elspeth stuff, and at least right at the beginning, it feels a little bit better. Uh, we'll have to see how that goes. I'm, I'll be doing a Carl Franz campaign on my own and, and see how that runs, because I know he does the full mechanic and hers is only partial. Uh, but I've already spent a few turns doing a Thoric uh, game earlier this morning with the new mechanics and the grudges already feel uh, a ton better um, I'm not it, it's a little hard to say <laughs> later in the campaign how I like them but uh, at least right off the bat they don't feel like a slog and a punishment they feel more like something you're playing into uh, it also feels like it it uh, Thorak, makes you uh, play a more, more aggressive play Thorak. style because you can't kind of just sit back on your morals and, and wait uh, which uh, feels less dwarfy to me, but uh, is, is at least interesting. Malachi is very different. He sets out to engineer his doom in a blaze of glory and adventure, taking a flight from Krakadrak in the legendary spirit of Grungni. He has his own uh, flying ship. Um, so we will see how that plays. I know he uh, he's essentially a type of uh, horde character. Uh, so modified horde campaign, I believe. Is, is essentially what it is. Uh, faction effects is access to Malachi's adventures, enables powerful war machine and artillery modifications and unique legendary battles. Uh, he starts the campaign with control of Go Gotrek and Felix. Oh, that's, that's neat. Uh, upkeep minus 15% for artillery and flying war machine units, all armies. That's indeed. Rank plus 3 for artillery and flying war machine units, all armies. That's good. Lord effects. Malachi's army has access to the spirit of Brug these airship buildings. I'm sure that's great. I don't know what they are yet. Ability deranged munitions. An active ability on a 90 second cooldown. Gives magical attacks. Armor piercing missile damage plus 50%. And base missile damage plus 50%. Uh, affects one ally if they can do missile attacks. Yeah, that's good. That's a really good ability. Missile strength plus 20% for artillery and flying war machine. Also really good. Where, where is that on 
no, I know where that is on Elspeth. It's in her thing. Yeah, I like those. That's good. Um, we start with cannons. Great. Gyrocopters with gyrocopters with brimstone guns. Okay, sure. Thunderers, super. Couple miners. And doom seekers. Alright. Sounds good. Settings, I play on normal, normal. That's just me. Uh, I don't like the end game trigger in uh, turn timer range. That's not my favorite. I'd rather do it on long victory. I explained this in Elspeth's thing. Uh, if I don't make it to long victory, I don't want an end game <laughs> thing happening unless I'm specifically playing up to that. Uh, so uh, I trigger on long victory. Uh, leave that as it is. Who knows if I'll make it. Everything else should be good. I don't think there's anything else to look at here, so start campaign. Uh, yeah, the uh, the dwarves are fun. They're they're unit-wise, they've always been a really good um, army uh, for battles. They're just a little slow, but they're strong, tough. Um, I'm excited to see uh, what, if any, changes. Most of their new units are Slayers. Um, how that might play a little bit differently. The new airship looks really fun. Uh, the weird grudge thrower artillery thingy, the uh, or whatever it's called, doesn't look great. So we'll see how that goes. They get a new legendary hero. Nope, here's a slayer. From the earliest age of the Engineer's Guild, the Dawi have forged machines of war. Wonders hewn of Gromril and gold. Trusted plans handed down through generations. Yet there are those who defy tradition. Cast out from the guild for his outlandish ideas, Malachi Mackison now seeks to regain his honor, his slayer oath to be fulfilled through iron, grit, and glory. Started. We've got some serious work to do. Far in the frozen north. Check. Uh, I love. Uh, <laughs> I love the Immortal Empires map so much. It is so big that sometimes I have a hard time even figuring out where <laughs> where I'm at. north of Troll Country. Okay, so help hit Lair of the Troll King. Alright, there we are. Crack up. Oh. Start in control of Prakadrak. Alright, okay. That's, that's his rough territory. <clears throat> Malachi Mackison is both slayer and engineer who embarks on a deadly who embarks on deadly adventures using the might of the legendary spirit of Krugni. Pushing his engineering innovations to new heights as he seeks his desired doom. Progressing through Malachi's adventure missions, upgrades specific war machines, and leads to unique legendary battles against formidable enemies, while also potentially granting the benefits of the Dwarf's Age of Reckoning. Uh, yeah, sure. Completing the legendary battles of Malachi's adventures will earn the Masters of Innovation their campaign victory. More about Dwarves here. No. Summon the Spirit of Grugni to fight in battle. The Spirit of Grugni is a wonder to behold, built by the sweat of your own brow. It is time the Thunder Barge is called into action and launched headlong into the heart of battle. The Spirit of Grugni may be called upon in battle to Malachi's army via a special ability that can be proved by upgrading airship buildings. Learn more about the Spirit of Grugni here. Yeah, okay. 
more crew, airship growth plus five, and some oath gold. I like oath gold. <sighs> Engage the enemy. Defeat army belonging to the following faction, the Maggot Kin. Yep. 500. That'll be them. Ooh, so my on. Short carton. Our track is Lair of the Troll King, which is also Maggot Kin. And Squirt Dragon. Okay, so that's my province. Terrible. Terrible, terrible province, but dwarves get the underway, so it's not as bad a deal for us. Uh, okay. The Fly yes, Master serves only Nagle. Nerglings are, you know, the chaff. Plague bearers are a little annoying. Plague toads are strong enough. Don't know what the other two guys are. That's uncommon, but alright. Uh, okay, so. Uh, show. Okay, now this is already already done. If this is your first time playing a new dwarf campaign, it'll go through what the Rate Book of Grudges are. But I'll kind of go through it real quick here. Uh, there are five pages of legendary grudges with two legendary grudges each. Um, they each have uh, big goals, I guess. Um, hard goals, maybe, is... is way to put it. For instance, if you want to retake the realms, you need all of these provinces under control. But, you don't have to be the one that controls them. Dwarves have to control them. So all dwarf factions are kind of working towards these, in, in essence. I don't know how... Uh, I'm not really sure what the AI is doing, so I don't know how hard they're pushing to get any of this stuff, or if they're just expanding. I, I don't... I'm not the programmer, uh, and I haven't played in the new campaign long enough to really see. But you get big rewards for doing it. One, you get settled grudges, which I'll explain that in a, um, a minute as well as I can. Uh, 2,500 is a lot. And something else. So like this restores underway network, old world mountains, and gray mountains. Uh, let's go ahead and click out of here and scroll up. If you see these little tunnel entrances, they are underway networks. If you open them up, my understanding, because I have not done this yet, is you can teleport from one to another, and so you can teleport essentially anywhere in a network that you've um, opened up. So you, if, if the dwarves can get all of these provinces, all the provinces, not just uh, like one location in them, then you'll get Old World Mountains and Grey Mountains underway network. And I think there's two or three networks, if I remember correctly. Uh, this one, which is, I don't know, hilarious, is kill the elves. Uh, basically, eliminate all the elves on Elf Island, uh, and you get a landmark building in Vol's Anvil. Uh, I don't know what that is. It says the landmark building, uh, and some more settled grudges. Uh, destroy some other guys. They've got a grudge against these guys. Get some oath gold. Uh, a lot of wolf code. Gold. Uh, destroy the clans and get Hell Pit and Skaven Blight. I can get Hell Pit if I'm working hard enough. Uh, we'll see if we do that. Um, if somebody else could get hey, Skaven Blight and we can wipe these guys out, then we get to call in the miners, which summons a unit of, min unit of miners, kind of like the Skaven do. Uh, that that's, seems great. I like that. Uh... I, this is another one. Uh, reading through these is funny. There's, it, uh, they do a great job with production, and uh, their writing is, is both parts amazing and hilarious. Uh, also, can I say, uh, watching that uh, beginning cinematic, uh, kudos to their um, voice actors, uh, especially uh, Thrones of Decay, this, this go-around, uh, but in general, just really good, but... Uh, uh, that's got to be some crazy lines to have to voice act and, and to do so well. Uh, this is getting rid of the evil dwarves. If you can get rid of the evil dwarves, and for some reason Grimgore, uh, whatever, then you restore the Underway Network uh, over there. You gain a dwarf ancestor relic. I don't... There's nothing to hover over, so I don't know what that is, but I'm sure that's good too. Some more subtle grudges, which you want, you want... You want the settled grudges as much as you can. No, again, I'll go over. Uh, kill the forest. Forest elves. It's a lot of elf killing. And take uh, their main forests, I think. I, I believe these are all... You know, I'll take you to them. All right here around the Oak of Ages. And they are. Okay. 
unlocks a landmark building in the Oak of Ages. Can I see, let's see if we can see it on the map? I'll close this real quick. Uh, I cannot. Okay, so if some dwarf wanted to do it, then uh, you get a landmark building uh, there. It's more settled grudges, so great. Uh, we're on page four. I feel like they get a little bit easier towards the end for some reason. Um, this is chaos. Uh, take chaos. Uh, cool down after underway. Cool down after underway network travel minus returns. So you can use the underway even faster. Uh, this seems really important and unfortunately seems hard to do. Uh, I, I just I feel like you're almost never going to get this one done. We'll see. Maybe uh, maybe with where my guy is, I I might push and, and get that done. It's a little hard to say. Uh, kill the evil elves. <laughs> more more elves. Uh, a unique dwarf lord is added to your recruitment pool. That's cool. Uh, or, I don't know, maybe it's not, but it sounds cool. Uh, probably won't be doing that this campaign, sadly. And five, this one's a little bit easier. Uh, I, I, I say that. It seems like it should be a little easier. Kill the Crooked Moons and Clan Moors and take back Karak Eight Peaks. Great. Plus two grudge settler unit capacity per army. Um, a two... Too early to say. Those are your kind of free, fast uh, spawned units for grudges. Um, I, I'm sure that's good. Occupy Silver Pinnacle and make sure the Sealed Tombs building has been uh, built. Uh, I thought this was something against the Tomb Kings because it says it mentions Nefer Neferata's evil. Uh, unlocks a landmark building there and, and some grudges. Uh, I feel like that's probably pretty easy too, but I apparently didn't know where the silver pinnacle was when I was looking at it, and it's it's over here. That's not too far from me. That seems like probably the easiest one to do. Um, it, it, in a general sense, not necessarily a specific dwarven campaign sense, I guess. Uh, and again, any of the dwarves can do this, so if NPC dwarves are doing this Presumably, I'll get the rewards, too. Like, if I don't have control of Silver Pinnacle, I, I'm not going to build the building, but hopefully I get the grudges settled. Uh, it'll unlock the... Uh, looks like two underways. Restore the two underways. Uh, which then I can also use. Also has a page for Legendary Lords. Here's all the other Legendary Lords. The reason this is excited is if you can settle more grudges than their the other lords um, their faction total of settled grudges by a set amount you can confeder automatically confederate them um, if they're dead or got wiped out uh, then their lord will be added to your pool as the legendary lord which I mean that's got to be really good like this is great so great uh, I like that uh, and then the grudge settlers um, kind of like before where you would get free slayers I think was mostly what you got now it's not just slayers you can get uh, all eight of these units for hitting various points on the grudge um, that can be instantly um, recruited to your armies and they are this page just kind of tells you what they do uh, and I thought they were just Quarrelers, Slayers, Grudge Throwers, but actually they are uh, Grudge Settler versions of them and are better. Uh, let's see if I can give an example. Uh, so these Quarrelers with great weapons, their missiles are Shield Breakers. Um, unit has bonus versus infantry. I don't remember if normally they do or not. Uh, the Slayers, I think they get Sundered Armor. And their death blow is even stronger if they go below 25% hit points. They just get real powerful. Uh, monstrous impacts slows down. Uh, I saw that. Basically, this. I wonder if that's the same ability in uh, Elspeth's campaign. They also have shrapnel projectiles. Um, long beards are guardians and extra charge defense hammerers. Frostbite attacks, and they are frenzy iron drakes have more range up to 120 makes them almost real uh, ranged units and enables flammable attacks so they uh, makes 
makes them flammable. So they do even more damage when they hit. Special gyrocopters. Control hammer torpedo projectiles. Uh, I guess... Uh, sure. Um, and a uh, gyrocopter bomb. Uh, troll hammer. Gyrocopter bombs and then flame cannons. Uh, increased armor. Their armor is really high. Sure. And shrapnel. Projectiles. Their flames are shrapnel. Uh, I'm not even sure what that means. What does that mean in this sense? I don't know. Okay. Oh, splits while in flight. Okay, interesting. Uh, but you have to reach these various tiers of this to get these unlocked, and then they kind of create a pool, and you have a limited number that you can put in your armies. This is your grudge. This is your Age of Reckoning. An Age of Reckoning is ten turns. Sorry. You want to get as high in the Age of Reckoning as you can to settle a grudge. And I think you only settle a grudge if you can get all the way to uh, to Nolan Grom, which is 100%. Uh, and for this, it would be 2,600 points in 10 turns. Uh, this is how many turns remaining. The current grudge, I am 0 out of 2,600. And these are the benefits, then, that I get. Uh, I, I assume... For the next age, I guess I'm. I guess I'm not sure, but that's that's almost certainly got to be uh, control growth. Uh, great, uh, great and handy. Upkeep is reduced uh, is reduced for grudge settler units. Also good. Uh, it, and then it adds a certain number of grudge settler units to the mercenaries. And if you get all the way to the top, it'll spawn a temporary army of grudge settler units. Uh, the first two are actually bad. You lose control. You lose growth. You lose control, a little to almost no control, and a little bit of growth. And the upkeep for grudge solar units is increased, not great. The very bottom one, which is if you've done 0 to 24%, uh, doesn't give you even any grudge settlers. You're doing so terrible, I guess. You were an Elgi. Oh, that's not nice. Uh, if you're a Scruff, at the very least, you get some Quarrelers and Slayers. My experience with the very first age of Reckoning at any rate is it's not that hard to get to a Trom, which gives you a little, you know, one control, a bit of growth for for the thing. I don't know how hard it's going to be to get to uh, uh, Nolan Grom. Um, listening to reviews, and most of those reviews were in an earlier version, it sounded like maybe this was a little bit prohibitive, um, but it still seems better than the other crutch. <laughs> Uh, grudge issue. We still have both gold. I love that for dwarves. I love the forge. Uh, a version of the forge needs to be added to every um, faction, in my opinion. Uh, when I'm playing on my own, there is a couple of mods, uh, one specific one at any rate, that adds essentially that to almost every faction. Uh, every um, every regular game faction, anyways, uh, that I pretty much always use. I, in my opinion, it's, it's basically necessary. Uh, is this my adventures stuff? It is. First legendary battles. Fight legendary battles and unlock upgrades for units and the spirit of Grugni. I uh, can't do it to turn five, though, so we'll probably play at least long enough to see that unlocked. Um, looks good. Showed you that. The forge isn't unlocked until we get to Ulf Gold, but uh, from a quick look at it, it's no different than it was before. That. Ice Queen of Kiss. Hey, the ice court is close enough the frozen to kingdom welcome give us a trade. How well you guys are going to do it? Chosen. But a wonderful okay. day. Uh, do I not have a hero? Oop, don't have a hero. Oh, but we have Gotrek and Felix are already in our army. Uh, so that's good. Doomseekers. I believe our new guys, Fast for Dwarf, they are a type of um, slayers. Uh, they get death blow, not the powerful one. Spell resistance. They're slayer. They can 
I, I feel like this is new. Their weapon strength can never be reduced. Uh, good. Uh, they're also unbreakable, like Slayers were, which always made them even extra dangerous. Uh, Death Blow, when they're less than 20%, they get extra damage. So it's still good. Ooh, they get Wards of Grimnir, which each kill made, they get damage resistance up to 20%. Super. And then they get a Whirlwind of Death. They cannot move. If they're engaged in melee, they spin around and kill everything. Uh, I don't know if that is... Oh, it's 100% armor piercing. Uh, I don't know if that is able to hit allies or not. They are bonus versus infantry. 15. That's pretty good. Uh, so they're, they're, they're anti infantry. Miners, great. Some thunderers. Kind of a weird... Weird setup. Uh, that's fine. Um, let's take a look before I forget what our campaign victory conditions actually are. Complete four legendary battles at Malachi's Adventures, current 04. Destroy the war host of the apocalypse. You know, as you do, and the disciple of Hashud. They're not that far off, I guess. I guess that's doable. Uh, occupy loot erase 30, sure. Get plus three uh, heroes capacity. Um, I don't know if they've all been changed to that or what, but I feel like I'm seeing that more and more, which honestly I feel like is a really good for most factions anyways, really good short victory um, condition bonus. Long victory complete the short, do 70 complete all legendary battles. There looks like there's seven, I guess. Destroy the legions of Asgoth, sure, and the servants. So basically, all the dark dwarves, the dwarfs, and Grimgor's Ard Boys, because, you know, they're chaos dwarves. <laughs> what are we doing here, guys? Give a recruit rate plus 10. Um, it, that's good. Uh, I, I don't like that as much, because once I've done a long thing, I've probably got most of the heroes I'm going to get at that point in a campaign, I feel like. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, I feel like this should be at once something a little more powerful and also more general, maybe. But it, it, it is what it is. Uh, so I need to remember to summon the spirit of Grugni. Uh, and I need to capture character. Okay, that gives me the hammer of Smidnir. Cool. Okay, sure. Not moved. So that is my campaign. Uh, wind conditions. Oh, let's make sure we're moving fast. Fastest. And we are going, even though this is decisive, we're going to fight it to make sure that I summon my ship. Plus, I want to see the ship summoned. Oh, and then I need to remember after this fight, I want to take a look at his. Well, both. My, uh. Uh, territory and his ship uh, faction stuff. Okay. And we've got a cannon. Cannons are good for basically one thing in my opinion, and that is shooting big guys. Good news, they have a big guy to shoot. Bad news, I don't like this at all. Uh, maybe if we put them right on this hill, I kind of see him. He's in range. Yeah, let's do that. For the ancestors. I'm balling it. I should be able to shoot over those guys. Okay. Um, yeah, we've got artillery, so they've got to come to us. They don't have any kind of range. Does he have spells? Does so that's gonna be annoying. We On the other hand, we're dwarves, so maybe it's not that bad. Miners and miners! Quick, throw things on the guys when they go. Uh, I imagine the change to uh, gunpowder units applies to the dwarves too. They are a little more careful about not just running around the field when they can't see stuff, which is great. Sure. Okay. Uh, 
want the Slayers in. And sit them there. They want to take on the infantry. They're not Gortrek! big guys. Gortrek, on the other hand, he wants a piece of that thing. So do those guys. Sword drawn! He gives them regeneration. I feel like that's different, but maybe I'm wrong. He can give flaming attacks to himself. Bonus versus infantry, sure. Okay. And he's a ranged guy. Fast, unbreakable. Lustics expert. Does he though? Let's go ahead and stick in with those guys. I can. affect either. Just maybe put them on that side just to be a little closer, but the cannons and then these guys when they get closer. Does he have anything else? Snare, unbreakable, looks like. It's death blow with a regular one, so no, looks like no. Gyrocopters. They have bombs. So maybe drop those, maybe fly them in from this side so I can drop the bombs early and just harass the crap out of that guy. I believe that's everybody. Well, here's hoping this is a good thing. Uh, slight bit of warning, I have a tendency to pause a lot Move, no. as I am not Rage the best player. Far. Rage fast. Uh, although right now I don't really have a whole lot of stuff to pause. Yeah, cannons, that's an okay amount of damage. Let's go drop it. Yes, Lord. Yeah, good job. Oh, I got another. Nothing can stop us! No! Will do! Understood, Lord! Okay, that was a little bit. Cannon! Castle! Let's see how this goes! Now oh, there's the damn toads. The ancestor gods! Fire! Reload! Fire! Remember Cannon down! Dino Pumpkin! Stay on him. Rum. Ready to fight! Miners! The clans unite! Malachi Makaisen! Mine host! Why not? Dino Pumpkin! Show their ladders! Yes, Lord! Move now! Yeah. Just have to go around. And, uh, do I still have to wait? 20 seconds, okay. Slayers! Get them, get them guys. I'm ready! 15 seconds. Uh, get in on those guys, that's good, you're doing good. For the high king! Playing that thing. Bring them down! Toads are almost gone. Yeah, here we go. For the High King! Move now! Faster. 
uh, but it takes damage when it does that. And it's got a giant harpoon on the front, I believe can fire one time, you want to fire it at a big target, but that thing was basically already dead by the time we could pull him in. Uh, pretty good. Miners held their ground, which is what I needed. Oh, honestly, I thought those core or the thunderers took more damage than they did, but I guess they did not. Way to go, guys. Soda. Uh, that's, this is this is real uh, real recording here. Uh, go check. Good job. Uh, how much gold value? Four fifty three. Four seventy two. Not, not too bad. Five sixty. Those thunders did pretty good, both in the shooting and then on their own. Eight fifteen for the. <laughs> they only got one kill, but it was. If they counted the big guy on them, I'm not sure. 15. And the cannons actually did really good. Normally I don't like cannons. Good job, guys. So, uh, Okay, Drake to victory. Unit experience, plus 50. Sure. Income from all buildings, 10% for two turns. Control, nice. Army replenished by 9 is probably what I need this early, though. Two both gold and some treasury. That's good, but not a lot. Let's go with the 9%. Dwarves on, still don't seem to have good uh, recovery. Gain a follower. Yeah, okay, not impressed with that. I defeated them, 500. I summoned more crew and some oath gold. Jump on that. Great. Malachi Everybody goes up a level. That's also good. We got death blow. Determined death blow is the slightly better one. I've not actually seen that. And that's one that those uh, one guys have, which I was showing, uh, which is you know what you want. He's got a, looks like he's got a lot of stuff. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu, forging local province is great. Skaven subterranean and leadership. I don't think I need as much for the dwarves. Figure loss, that's good. Missile resistance for this guy is probably close to pointless. And Mentor, sure. Uh, looks like he's got a pretty standard yellow line. Uh, except that his is going to be ranged, focused. Strength versus green skin, that's not too bad. Whatever these cluster bombs are. Close range. That's actually good and certainly different. Piercing slow, I'll see. Explosive missile damage. It's pretty good. Range. Not bad. Speed. His charge bonus is 30. So I don't I don't get this. Maybe somebody can explain this. Uh, he's not a melee guy. Uh, his attack and melee defense are uh, what I would consider average to at least at the beginning of a campaign anyways, for a uh, uh, a hero or a, or a lord, uh, why would I want Deadly Onslaught? <laughs> um, his weapon strength is pretty good. Uh, his charge bonus is, is crap. To begin with, this gets him another 18. I mean, that's, you know, it's a number, sure. Uh, his base weapon damage and his armor-piercing weapon damage, like, yeah, that's you know, good for, for 31 seconds, but he's not a melee guy. Why is why is this a thing? He's not charging guys. He's, he doesn't even get a mount, as far as I can tell. He doesn't have an option for it. Why isn't this some sort of super shoot? Um, same same question for the new Empire Engineers. Uh, they get the same thing. Uh, now, granted, they can get mounted on a horse, which gives them a higher charge bonus to begin with, so then the charge bonus from this you know, stacks up even higher, so you'd maybe charge them in once 
maybe maybe use that on cooldown for those guys. I, I'm not sure. Uh, it's really weird. I, I don't like that at all. Uh, Tapestry of Oaths. So this is for our Slayers. So he's gonna, it's going to be a weird campaign for this guy. Uh, kind of like Elsvis. It feels like they took two things and mashed them together. This guy is uh, gunpowder and uh, shirtless uh, uh, berserk dudes. Uh, missile resistance for these guys. That's actually that's really good. Um, casualty replenishment rate. Yeah, they, they probably need that. Uh, and upkeep. Great. Uh, so, you know really good stuff. It looks like you're going to swap out your entire army for slayers and guys with guns. Uh, unlocks hero recruitment master engineer uh, and two extra ma master engineers and research rate. So that's really good. More slayer bonuses. All right. Sure. Uh, artillery uh, and airships, that's great. I like that. So maybe not so much gunners, maybe it's just artillery and, and ships. Uh, he gets ammunition, he gets artillery master, that's good. Architect, uh, not really. Uh, horde building cost, though, is reduced. And then master engineer, his range, another 15%. The range musicians upgraded, uh, which is see it from there. That's fine. That's good. Uh, red line, which I imagine is pretty standard. Uh, hard, to, hard to say, but one specific for airships. I'm not sure. I don't remember if the other, other guys get that or not. And then Rut Archer, Miner's Instincts, Attrition when under siege. I don't ever take that. Corruption can be handy. Mason, uh, Province capital and settlement buildings. That seems a weird option. Uh, Iron Wield is always decent. Lightning Strike is good, but I, at this point, I'd love to see I like. Well, maybe not. I don't. It's annoying when the enemies get it. Uh, reassuring presence, attrition. You know that can be handy. Casualty replenishment rate. This for dwarves, especially. This needs to be over here. Why is this over here? That's just crazy. Uh, they. It's basically a must-have, and this guy's got so many things that it's going to be hard to get to that. Uh, ambush defense chance is always good. An inquiring mind, I'll oh, give some research rate. That's cool. Uh, not speed. Interesting. Research is great, though. So, you know, yay research. Uh, okay. Well, we're definitely taking route marcher. Make him better, make his stuff better. I don't really need that. I'm really not sure. I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure how much I like the passive experience gain abilities, anyways. Uh, it's one of those things that's so much kind of in the background that uh, it's hard to tell. That's rank 12, that's rank 6. But then he gets bombs and his shot's better. Uh, I, I think I need the, I think I need that thing though. Uh, let's go. With that. All right. Um, I think this is different. I don't think you used to get. Uh, Did you see that? Talent, lads? talent trees for these guys. If I remember correctly. Uh, he gets training. I'm probably not going to spend anything on that. I can't do anything. So he basically just gets death blow or blade master rather. So that's fine. Uh, oh, that's a no-brainer. Uh, this thing is pretty much the same. I actually should have taken a quick look. Goldrex Doom. Did you see that, lads? Defense bonus for some large is good. Treasure hunter, handy on the offensive when attacking. That's oh, the whole army though. That's really good. Hardened an adventurer, extra hit points, wound recovery. That's kind of cool. Causes fear and gets perfect vigor. It's great. Okay, a bunch of different things. Slippery. Yeah, oh, so you can escape. Okay. Vanguard deployment. Interesting. 
campaign movement range for the accompanying lord. That's really good. Woodsmen win fighting against beastmen. Orc Slayer. Melee defense when fighting against greenskins for the hero's army. That's also good. Uh, especially if I have to go against Grimgore. Enemy battle reinforcement time, plus 25%. Yep, yeah, that, that's smart. Uh, honestly, kind of wish that was higher. Higher leadership is good. Oh, Slayer. Missile block chance, 20%. That's good. Missile resistance for the when fighting against elves for the hero's army. Range when fighting against elves, hero's army. Um, I have a question. Uh, answer down below if you know. Uh, when it says elves, does it mean all elves, including uh, uh, dark elves? I don't know. Zombie Slayer lowers attrition by a little bit. Not a whole lot, really. Physical resistance, that's always good, though. And weapon strength when fighting against pretty much any type of undead. Cool. Uh, missile resistance, why bother? Speed, melee defense, and striders, good, though. Weapon strength and an additional weapon strength versus green skin. That's also great. Okay. Dragon Slayer. Extra armor piercing. That's really good. Sprickly Mandling. Charge bonus. Uh, he gets evasion as a passive. And then there's his vanguard deployment. Swordsman. Attack and defense. This is already pretty high, but even better. Spell resistance is... Uh, and also, he's not mounted, so I don't really care about missile resistance. Probably won't take that. Helping Hand uh, affects all allies in range if they're a hero. Melee attack and damage resistance. Okay, there it is. I, I thought, he, thought he used to come with that as a uh, base. But either way, he's got to take it now. Lethal Romancer enables charmed attacks. That's cool. And growth bonus. Sure. You can maybe hear my dogs in the background. I guess they see a squirrel outside. Weapon strength and bonus for infantry. Awesome. Sweet talker. Immune to diplomatic penalties from trespassing. Interesting. Diplomatic relations with men and dwarves. Is that for my army or for him? That would, that would be weird. And glorified sentry. Enemy hero, action, success, chance, minus 15, hero's defense, and passive ability, guardian, I guess additional, I assume additional, from the helping hand. And to the bitter end, committed blood oath, uh, regeneration er area, uh, so lords and heroes up to two if they're in melee. Uh, that feels like that's a big regeneration. Replaces blood oath. Now, okay, Blood Oath is already good. This is slightly better. 20 to 25. 0.2 to 0.25. You know, the, okay. And he's unbreakable. Okay, cool. Good for good for Felix. I don't have... Well, you've, oh, you've already got weapons. Ah, I've got Kragel Wool. Okay, good for you. Also. Do, 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 do. A little bit of luck. And a whole lot of black poodle. Oh, so here's the Grudge Settler chart. If we get them, then they go up to here, and you can s store up to 20 each, it looks like. Maximum capacity per army is 5. Okay, so that's the answer to that question. Regiment's more renown. Still a nice oh, amount, I wonder. When it's someone else exploding. Did they add any new ones? Doom Seekers. Okay, so there's there's something new in there. I always like a good long list of regiments of renown. And then uh, whatever adventure units are, which we have not seen yet. Uh, you'll notice we're already at 11%. A bit we've got a whole lot of 308 blood. out of 206. And you'll see, I, I guess I didn't explain that, uh, above settlements and... I don't know if I can see an army here. I don't. And above armies, there will be a number next to a book, which is uh, a grudge amount that they are worth for defeating combat. I believe you get that if you, even if you sack it. You, you've got that. You don't have to occupy it, I don't think. Okay, let's take a look at our airship. Did you see that? Stuff. Uh, as it gets up there, we get 
get Dragon Slayer Heroes, Slayer Pirates and Slayers, and then we get the big ones, which are the Doom Seekers and the Giant Slayers. Uh, we get, looks like, pretty regular dwarf thing. Free units, then we get one that's guns. Various types, we get engineers, which are gyrocopters, and master engineers, all the way up to thunder barges, which are, oof, that is, that is a big upkeep. I mean, I'm not saying that they're not worth it, but it is big. <laughs> they count it as a penalty. Oh yeah, they're always flying, yeah. It fires while moving. It just shoots at pretty much everything. Um, but they look neat. We can get compact forges. We can get artillery. There's the goblin hewer, is what I was talking about earlier. It's only got four shots and almost no range, but it does 3,000, and it's good against large things. It's a very specific... Uh, <laughs> it's a very specific thing, uh, and I know in the reviews, a lot of people weren't, weren't liking them. Um, I don't. We'll we'll definitely take some because I want to see how they how they work. Uh, because they do a ton of damage if you can get them close enough against like a monster. They only get a couple of shots, but it almost doesn't matter. They do so much. Uh, and then they are uh, slayers. Uh, so like they fight, but I don't know how many there's. Tells me the mass. There's four hewers, I think, in a, in a squad, but I don't know how many slayers per hewer, so it's going to be a small amount, but still it's going to be, uh, I don't know, dangerous fighters, I guess. Weird. Uh, organ guns later, and the flame cannons. Don't know if we'll do anything for the flame cannons. Unit experience, unit experience in rank, unit experience in even more rank, uh, unit experience for armies in the circle. That's nice. Beer production, upkeep reduction, recruitment cost. Nice. Same. Pretty much the same. Airship recruit capacity. Circle of influence size goes up. Airship crew recruitment capacity. You seem that's is that this? Must be that, but that's really low. If that's what I'm thinking of. Ooh, movement range. Duration before disengaging. So I think the spirit of Gregling lasts 90 more seconds. Thunderburner upgraded. I think it gets uh, its speed boost, but it looks like there's no damage at that point. Spirit no longer disengages. Campaign movement range, another bonus. Same, no longer disengages. And then armies in the circle get it. That's a, okay, that's, I mean, that's fine. There's some more casual replenishment and air crew growth. Crew recruitment, oh, okay. I, I get what it was, I'm silly. Ooh, and lower attrition by a decent amount. Okay, interesting. Don't do this yet though, because we're not done moving. We should be able to take your tracking. Only the toughest dowie. Uh, sadly, I can't recruit anything, but that's okay. Engineer. Do that, and I think we'll just decisive that out. We're going to battle. That, that should be an almost nothing battle with mostly nerdlings. Uh, was that close enough to sack and, and sit? I wish I could tell how much movement I had left, because I could use the oath cold. I'm just going to occupy it just in case. <laughs> Was that a Nurgle guy yelling at me? I what? Somebody went up. Oh, it's not for a second level though. Skills, uh, same thing. Well, actually, let's do corruption. One tag for that. Don't know why Gotrek boosts income, but whatever. Ooh. Physical resistance, so he's got kind of a weird one. His melee attack is already so high, though. Let's give him. Uh, let's give him the resistance. It's just almost certainly going to be better.
better than the hard to hit. Uh, now you can take Blade Master. Good job, bud. Way to go. Way to go, guys. Um, almost certainly want that. We've got Lords, Rune Lords, and Demon Slayers. Still just a handful of Lords for the Dwarves. Which is fine. Dragon Slayers for Heroes, Thanes, Rune Smiths. I really want a rune smith. If you're not using magic, you're kind of behind. Master Engineer is probably pretty good for this too. Uh, oops, didn't do that. Your grudge is in the making. Oh, nice. So, do I even need anti armor yet? I probably don't. Hi. These ones are so not, not those guys. Let's get just a solid front line. Already got two miners with blasting charges, so that's fine. Garak Drak! Stewarton has a dwarf wharf. <laughs> uh, that's good though. Um Drak and Drak. I need so many things, but what I really want is a rune smith. So, that's what we're going to do. Really want the Runesmith set up. Thane, yep. The Silver Hall. Ooh, that's pretty nice. Gives me a bunch of Thanes. Hero recruit rank plus five for Thanes all provinces. Provides Garrison one Thane. It's not a whole lot. It, it is what it is, though. Okay. Research available. Research is different. We've got guilds and clans. Clans is combat stuff. Guilds is more infrastructure, and that's what we'll... Oh, actually, don't need that yet. Let's give us speed. I don't think we have any dwarves close. Yeah, I'll click that, and I like this, because then I can see my thing. So I need to move on to the layer of the Troll King before they can get uh, too much too much behind them. I have to pause here. Time for Pop Pop Plays. Okay, probably a, uh, <coughs> a harsh edit there. Uh, but I'm back. As I said, I want to do uh, up to turn five so we can see what the adventures are in this first uh, run through. Uh, even if that makes this uh, video a little bit long. Uh, we're in turn two. But the next few should probably go fairly quick. Uh, we got our technology, speed plus 10% for infantry units. I mean, when you're this, some of the slowest infantry in the game, that's something you want. Uh, mission issued, upgrade airship hull to hardened hull. That's just a thing we're probably going to get. I imagine that's no just the... Yeah, that's just round two. All right, fun. The greatest uh, You'll notice we're already at 24% at the end of, well, at the beginning of turn two, but at the end of turn one, so we're almost at uh, Scruff, uh, which, you know, if you can hit Scruff, that's not great, but it's it's not terrible for uh, for 10 turns. Growth minus 10% isn't great. Dwarves historically haven't been great for growth, so I'm not quite sure uh, where we'll be at for that. How well Boris is going to do? Are you interested in a sister of ice? They are. I will sure. treat you and a trade pack. Respect. That's great. Let like us that. celebrate. Kizl, hear me roar. Yep. yep, there's Boris. He wants a trade. Orson loves and military access. Yeah, that's fine. Lord of all. Brotherhood of the Bear that did not make them happy for whatever reason. Sure. Storm Kislev. Kislev, Kislev, Kislev. I forgot what their uh, faction was called when I was making my video for the uh, Empire and I called them Russians. <clears throat> Shame on me. Kislev. Uh, I like this guy because uh, I've had a number of campaigns, uh, Kislev specifically, where you're kind of fighting in and around this area and hopefully this 
uh, Malachi will be a stronger ally and will last a bit longer than uh, what may have been there before, which I don't, I don't recall if there were dwarves at Krakadrak or if there was no one. But uh, We need to get over here as quick as we can. We can't make it in one turn. Close, though. But thankfully, because we are horde, we can recruit a unit. Just the one, but a unit just the same. Yeah, we got it. Will be helpful. Uh, still, probably don't need those guys. Blasting charges, dudes, are not that much cheaper. It's the difference. A little bit more armor and a shield. Those guys are Nurgles. So shield's not that big a deal. It's not a lot of range. Probably won't be any. In fact, leadership. I'm not too worried about. They're so high already. Higher melee attack. A oh, much bigger melee defense for four foyers. I see. Weapon strength is a bit higher, so we'll go with Dwarf Warrior. Not going to spend two turns for global, though. Uh, that's good. And I want to get that up, so let's research. Gather the throngs. Recruitment cost goes down. It's three turns. It's not that impressive. Let's go ahead and pick up the ten, ten points with Dwarves for when we run into them. Plus, we can get the growth, which we want anyways. And that's pretty much it for turn two. We're making a lot of money, partly because we can't quite get as big an army. We can't sit there and recruit. We need to take out the guys at the lair of the Troll King as quick as we can. At least I don't have to, but I want to. That gives us another, almost 300 more um, grudge. I'm not sure what they call it. Grudge, grudge progress. And turn... Now, I'm not entirely certain. Um, it kind of tells you a little bit about it, but the faction itself will... Uh, create grudges based on stuff that they're doing, uh, and then the, uh, the demons of chaos actions. Um, their faction and then their um, not the individual armies, I'm not sure what you call that, the um, specific part of the faction, I guess, gets their own on top of that. Sure. Confederate, a legendary lord in the Book of Grudges, under Oath Gold. Try that. Um, my understanding is we need 2,600 to actually complete a grudge, settle a grudge. Uh, but that gets bigger every age, or gets bigger with the amount of Factions that you've run across in every age. I'm not quite sure, but it sounds like it gets bigger as the campaign goes along and That's one complaint. I've heard. I don't know if they've changed that uh, I've not played far enough for it to matter yet or to, I'll figure it out. to run into it. I guess is, is kind of the thing I'm on it. Doing that. Hopefully we can just take Ready. those guys. Yeah, decisive victory. What kind of terrain would it be? It would be straight up I don't want to fight this even though this first episode is going to be a little bit long. Um, I'm going to see that spirit of Grugni come out again. Before I finish, now I have a proper front line for Dwarf Warriors. Stick my cannons right here in the woods. Can they? Uh, see them as they come over the ridge, but they won't see see them to shoot from the beginning. On the other hand, if I stick them here, they will they have plague toads. Uh, plague toads, Nurgle. Nurglings, 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 a couple of plague bearers, and a 
Chaos Sorcerer. Uh, those guys are tough, but I'm not too worried about it. I don't think we'll, we'll sit here. Maybe stick the miners. Yes! On the hill. Looks like it's starting out. Oh, cute. The Doomseekers just get to be out there. Ba -ba -ba, the Toads, if they make a beeline for my cannons, which would make a lot of sense. Uh, get stopped by the miners. I want to get him in with the Toads. These things, I think. Fly them over and burn the toads as quick as I can. It is a reckoning. I guess the rest of this just kind of spread out here. Just kind of box them up. They're hidden there, but that doesn't really do anything for me. They stand and fight. They take a lot of damage. I don't think I want that. I think that helps me any. We'll walk them over here. That way they can catch the toads if they're coming in. Assuming the toads move up towards the cannons. And if they don't, then they'll have a pretty much, hopefully, a perfect line just right down the front line if, if they kind of come in and, and catch me there. That should be pretty good. I command the spirit of <sighs> this guy. He's basically an engineer. He's got a good range though. 180. Ready to fight! You can help hold the front line, I suppose. Okay, that looks good. Let's start that. Pause real quick, because I want to. I want the cannons firing on those guys. There we go. Uh, Burning the toads. Pitch your targets, well. Wow. Engineer, right side on us. You're not gonna throw, and they did not. Okay. Go track. Go track. I will. Which that armor piercing is going to do, but. Understood, Lord. Nothing can stop us. Go! And sooner was it! Take him down! Cannons can probably fire at something else now. <laughs> Let the vengeance begin! Doing. See it through. 
Stays out for a while. Yeah, nice. Thunderous. Oh, that's fine. You're done. You're over. I do find that on normal, and I know normal's not all that hard, uh, I tend to punch above the auto correct or auto battle thing pretty good. Uh, if it's a uh, close victory, I can usually get a good victory. If it's a uh, valiant defeat, I can usually get like a Pyrrhic victory. Uh, if not a little bit better, kind of depends on the matchup. Um, one thing I have noticed is sometimes on these like really small fights where maybe my forces aren't all that big and their forces aren't too, where they usually get kind of close to the beginning of the game, sometimes I can do just take no losses almost and, and just smash them, and then sometimes I probably take more damage than, uh, than the game actually would, because I'm not as careful as, as it might be. I didn't do too bad though, those, those guys didn't get, get hurt as much as I thought. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, let's do sack it. It's only four oath gold, though. It's a decent amount of plunder. Yeah, let's do sack it. Ha! Move in. Occupy. I'm scared. And yeah, that's it for Magath Kin. Malakai Makaisen! It's already half of what that was, but. Both of those. Sacking it didn't do much good. I'm still not. Sometimes sacking is great, sometimes it feels like it's not. Not great at all. I have one, and I could get the unit experience thing. No, we want two. We want to upgrade to that. So let's wait. Let's do get the third one of those guys as a placeholder, and two more. Regular guys gets us up to 16. I what? Uh, everybody went up a level. It looks like. Oh, he gets that automatically. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Take that. It's not my mainline fighter, anyways. That's right. Physical resistance. On the other hand, it's a more standard line. Let's make him a little more defensive. Okay. Can't recruit a hero yet. One turn for that, that's why. That's fine. Uh, we're at 39, so now that one's... You can see it's lit up. We are scruffs. We're on our way to hopefully becoming at least Troms. That's probably where we'll hit, because we only have 10 turns, but we'll see. Um, building upgrade wipes for that, I don't care. Research available. And we want that growth. The guild may not like it. Dwarves. We get a commandment, that's handy. Permit cost. How 
full are we? We really don't we really don't need that because he gets the. Uh, it's only one right now, but the um, horde recruit, even on the move, is just really strong. The growth we probably want. Although that that'll need to stabilize, but we'll leave it for now. And turn. The next bit should go pretty quick, and then we'll be finished with this video. Um, the plan will be, uh, and the same for my other two videos for this. Probably not going to do videos for the entire campaign. I'll probably do a beginning, one or two videos kind of in the middle of my campaign, and then a video towards like the end uh, is probably what I'm going to end up doing. Uh, that way, I don't have to worry so much about sitting down and actually recording as I play through and stuff. The Drusina Enclave is gone. Yeah, what happens? Establish a trade agreement. I just did that. Engineer! I could run over to help him. That would be really handy for everybody. But if they've got an army and Gorich is already out there, that could be a problem. I don't know who has frozen landing in bitch. He can't, he can't hide it. Mulder only has three, though. So is this them, or is this him? Are these even... Uh, stuff? Innovator. Do give me a runesmith. Ancestor blood. Spell resistance. Additions on percent. All rune magic shared cooldown. That'd be good if I had a rune lord, but I don't. Physical resistance, 15. That's good. Leadership melee attack. It's pretty good. It's only two, but it's still handy. I'm gonna go with the hardy guy. You so hard. Hardy. Agree. Scouting. I've cast the rune. Can't, can't get there this turn though. I'm on it. I do think I want to go, go to help it. Keep that bird of Nah, no, it's it, it, only it is what it is. Down. Probably shouldn't. I should probably actually wait. Great though. Ah, it's cozier underground. It's cozier in the blimp. I want to see that. It's more of these guys. Okay, and I'll get Dragon Slayer is a hero. And Slayers, and I will want Slayers. Uh, we haven't seen the thing for it. But the legendary, the other legendary hero. Requires you to have something like eight Slayer units. And I've got, you know, one. So I'll need more. Um, that put me at 17, 18 for the other hero. Actually, probably don't use him. So 17, and then three Slayer units. Yes, I don't think I'm going to recruit anything. Just upgrade. And. Never yield. Yep. Do not even consider questioning mom. Sure. Sure. Why would I? Ah, oh, there we go. Okay. Enter. While well, we're looking at gray seas. I realize I probably shouldn't have moved because I don't know. I literally don't know what the adventure system actually is. Um, I've heard them talk about it in some of the reviews, but. I wasn't paying that much attention. Beyond, I know some people really enjoy his campaign because of it. Hey, my hardened. Hey, more oath gold. Hey, Malachi's adventures unlock. Looks like turn five is the turn where everything happens because that also unlocks the forge for us. There surely is no better field test for the war machines of the Dowie than a Slayer's Path to do. View the Malachi's adventures panel for more information. I will. The Forge unlocked the Pledge of Oath Gold can now unlock the power of millennia old Dowie secrets. View the Forge panel for more information. I will do that. Complete a mission from Malachi's Adventures. Any oath sworn to kin and ally alike must be upheld to strike out against those who would threaten the forces of order, for honor demands action in the fulfillment of your destiny. Malachi's Adventures can be started in the panel accessed from the top of the main campaign interface, where adventure mission icons and tooltips will also appear. Learn about Malachi's adventures here. 
uh, treachery and an adventuring cannoneers. Cannons get stronger for five turns. Okay, sure. Cannons aren't my favorite. All right, well, first of all, we've got the forge, which I believe is exactly the same across everybody, except that only, um, only the runesmith gets the special extra one where you get, like, a dinosaur. Uh, oh. What? Oh, okay. Cute. Um, <laughs> the most important runes. Uh, although the banner runes are good, too. Um, the, the most important runes are the character runes. Uh, the runesmith, his is only his is half as much because that's his faction thing. I, I, I forgot about that because they're only 150 and easy to get. Uh, these are just they're really good, and you get three of them each um, until you get down to the like lower individual ones, which are even better and more expensive. Um, uh, yeah, I'm probably saving up for one of those because just giving guys frenzy or bonus versus large or reward save on three heroes and lords is just too good. So, hey, we'll save that. That's fine. The past uh, is the past. The past is the past. Uh, see, there's Throt and Clean. He does have a there. Let's see what the, the dogs are going crazy again. Sorry about that. Hopefully that doesn't get picked up too bad. Malachi's Adventures. Okay. Malachi's Adventures. It's a series of dangerous missions that permanently modify his artillery and war machine units, culminating in unique legendary battles and other rewards. There are seven different adventures available to complete, each against different foes. Locked adventures become available after legendary battles of prior adventures are completed. All right. Sounds good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven adventures. Each adventure has six different missions and one legendary battle, each with their own conditions and rewards. An adventure's legendary battle only becomes available after a certain number of its missions are completed in any order, some of which grant bonuses to the unit being modified. Oh, this sounds a lot like the Changelings thing, which, hey, I'm, I'm down with. A number of mountain holds have been... Oh, no. Here you can see details of the adventure's narrative and what you will likely be doing each mission. Okay, fair. The foes to be faced in the adventure's legendary battle are displayed here, above a list of rewards gained for completing the battle. Uh, a, a dragon and a guy on a horse. Sure, I can take that. The, units, the unit being modified during the adventure is displayed here, above a list of rewards gained from completing this adventure's missions. Okay. And starting an adventure costs treasury and adds to the artillery or war machine being modified to the higher mercenaries panel. Treasury and adds to and adds the artillery or war machine being modified to the higher mercenaries panel. Oh, okay, I see. Interesting. Check. Okay, I think I get it. So we can adventures we have unlocked our dragon's bane and dreadquake destruction sure <coughs> i can't see the individual stuff which seems i mean that's fine i once you played through it my guess would be then you would know what the adventures are so having this blocked off from here seems weird unless it's like randomized which would be cool to unlock the final battle of the selected adventure, complete the required number of missions as indicated by the number of empty slots surrounding the button. Is that these? Would that be three? I'm not sure. Uh, legendary battle rewards are Dragonhide Cloaks. Uh, which you get to a Slayer unit, which gives them fire resist and glittering scales, which lowers melee attack. Passive ability, awe-inspiring sight for the spirit of Grugni army ability. No, oh, it's a, it inspires my dwarves for the ship, I guess. Cool. Uh, a number of mountain holds have been devastated by a vicious dragon, leaving countless dwarves dead and homeless. The wretched monster may have the protection of the high elves, but this cannot go unavenged. The cannons are... <laughs> those elves again. <laughs> the cannons are freshly cooled from the forge. It is time to hunt down the drake and blast him from its lair to oblivion. Yeah, that is what cannons would be for. Face high elves in battle, fight in mount mountain climates, and decide the fate of the 
dwarf refugees. So these are things you will be doing, I guess. When you start the battle, you get three cannons in your mercenary thing. That's cool. Adds cannons. Unit mission rewards. It's a list of rewards available for this adventure. Looks like four. Okay, I don't know if I, do I get all of them, I assume. I'm not really sure. Reload time reduction plus 10% for cannons. I mean, that's all armies faction wide. That's just really good for cannons. Unit experience gain for cannon units. That's sure, that's fine. Grape shot ammunition switch for cannon units. Uh, if that acts like the, uh, what the Dark Elves uh, giant crossbow things do that. I think there's another artillery that does that where it's either, its shots can either be versus anti-large, essentially, or anti-infantry. Uh, that would make me like cannons a lot better. And recruit rank plus two for cannons, all remains faction-wide. I mean, that's, that's handy. Uh, yeah, the grape shot thing alone would make me more interested in cannons. Dreadquake destruction. Kislev has proven itself to be a resilient scourge of chaos in all its forms. Yet recently, the Tsar lands have been blighted by raids of infernal machines commanded by the Dowie Chaos Corrupted Cousins, the Fire Dwarves. A newly assembled gyrocopter fleet awaits to join the spirit of Grugni's command to help bring an end to the notorious Sorcerer Prophet responsible. Face the Chaos Dwarves in battle, fight in wasteland climates, and establish diplomacy with Kislev or Cathay. That's good. The legendary battle will be against a Kadai destroyer and one Dreadquake mortar. I can take the two of those things. Yeah, that's, I'm sure that's right. Get a glaive gun. Glaive gun is a weapon, bonus versus large. Range 10% and armor piercing missile damage 50%. Interesting. If true, passive ability, emergency repairs for all gyrocopters and gyro bombers. They get a, basically they heal 20% one time in a battle. If their hit points are less than 50%, interesting. That's not bad. Um, full disclosure, I, I kind of don't like the gyrocopters uh, that much. You get two gyrocopters and a brimstone gun, which is, I think, the one we've got in our army already, which I'm not sure I like. I normally like flamethrower troops. I'm not sure I like that. And the gyrocopters, I, th I think those are a new unit. Uh... Upgraded units are gyrocopters, Vanguard deployment for gyrocopters, I mean, that's good. Unit experience, sure. Missile strength, uh, up, sure. 360 missile block for gyrocopter units, that's pretty, pretty good. And missile block chance, 25%, okay, sure. Um, I do think I want to go after the Chaos Dwarves in this campaign. Uh, I th actually, I think that's the short thing, I'll have to check that again. Um, but I think we're not ready to go that direction because I, I want to take Hell Pit uh, and maybe help Kislev a little bit. If I can get a good stronghold here and then move down towards those guys, that'd be great. Uh, if I can keep Kislev alive, that'd be good too. Okay, so I have to complete one adventure. I have to complete one adventure. I have to com complete one adventure. Complete one adventure three adventures so the last one is so I get a choice of two then I get to unlock the other four and then I unlock the last one looks like interesting we're gonna do Dragon's Bane uh, the cannon thing is just too tempting and that feels like it just takes cannons through the entire game I'm sure it's almost the equivalent to for the gyrocopters but we'll do that so start the adventure you have begun an adventure the buttons to the left and right of the legendary battle button represent this adventure's missions sure yeah, I, I buy that. Start selecting a missions button displays its objectives and rewards. Okay. The number of pips surrounding the legendary battle button indicate how many of the adventures missions you must complete to unlock the battle. It says pips, but I don't know which things it's counting as pips. So that's cool. Is it these or is it is it these? Uh, all right, that's fine. Either way. The top bar displays the active adventure, allowing you to easily track your progress and mission information via icons and tooltips. Great. When multiple adventures are active, clicking the Pin Adventure button on a select adventure will set it 
to display in the top bar when multiple adventures. Okay, so you could have multiple adventures going on. I guess I could maybe be doing both at once if I wanted to pay the money for it. Okay, interesting. Uh, I mean, I want to select these. Or are these just what I can be doing? Let's kill 800 enemies with cannon units. Uh, <laughs> uh, though the Slayer's Oath demands a valiant demise, great warriors chasing death and glory serve the Dawi little, while the great holds still lie vulnerable. And now there's cause to unleash your full engineering prowess on those with dwarf blood on their talons. If there is any hope of bringing down a dragon, however, every cannon must first be optimized and calibrated to the finest specifications. Perhaps it's time to take your latest artillery line out for a field test or two. I don't think Great Shot's going to do anything versus the dragon, but that's fine. Wait, one battle with cavalry units in the enemy army. That gives me the reload. But two battles in a region with mountain climate. Oh, probably was here. Unit experience for cannons. That's great. Complete the Dilemma Chain Dwarf Refugees. Interact with the marker to start the dilemma. Gives me Oath Gold. That's cool. Fight two battles against High Elves. Oh, crit rank plus two. I'm probably not going to do that. I don't want to just... don't need to think we need to be going after the High Elves so much. Refractory... Okay, interesting. Okay. So, looking... Cavalry's coming... I mean, I, I guess I look out for an army with cavalry. I wonder if the Toads counted. Mountain climate shouldn't be too hard to do. Kill 800 enemies is a little trickier. I need more cannons, so I'll probably have to take those mercenaries and probably have to be firing into um, infantry to get that. If I take all three, that probably won't take too long. And then give me the grape shot. Mm -hmm. That is an announcement. Thank you very much. Don't save, though. Okay. Okay. So presumably... Oh, it takes five turns to start this adventure. So, that's fine. Um, and then I have to go to that. Go to there. I wonder if we can just send a hero. Dragon's Bane has begun. Completing this adventure's missions will lead to its final battle. Cannons will receive permanent upgrades. Cool. Okay. Here's something you might not know. Skaven have a lot of guys yes, that me. cannons can kill. Yeah. Join up. By law. So, I've got three of them. I probably want to put two in here. For Karak, Kadren, and a warm mug. Oh, wrong thing again. Those are grudge settlers. <laughs> Yeah, recruit two of those. That puts me to 19. And then we're going to get Slayers after we move. I still think we're going to go after this guy. Yeah, we're going to go... I want to check out the Slayer Pirates. Hybrid unit, fast for a dwarf, death blow, fire while moving. Yeah. Probably get a new board. Five turns to get that up. I want to. I want to get that up. I think. Can't do another lord yet. Uh, Rune lord, demon slayer, lord. are really good. Man. Uh, be a while since before I can get my next prune guy, though. Prune Lord, leave it. Let's get a small army going for you. These guys are cheaper than regular slayers. And they've got short ranged attacks. Let's do 
three of those guys and back them up with uh, regular dudes. That's what we'll back them up with. Okay. And give you a cannon. Blank that out now. Uh, up, 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 up. I have one point. It takes four to go to the next thing. Experience and root. No, these all cost a bit, and I think I want a second one of those. A lot of things here I want, I guess. Quarrelers, great weapons. Pip pop a doop, yeah, I'm waiting on. I think I. No, we'll take that though. Oh, and. Most of my money! Okay, and turn. Uh, we'll let that play out and then save the game. So, feel free to hit like and subscribe. Hit that notification button. Um, ring that bell. Comment if you don't like uh, what I'm doing or think that okay, heading towards help is a dumb idea. Put your oath gold to good use, my lord. I will, buddy. I will. Allows you to... Heavy, heavy quern stones. Uh, uh, this will be the end of uh, this episode, uh, but stay tuned for the next episode of, of uh, Grun Malachi's Adventures. Uh, thanks again for joining me. And I'll see you soon.